But now we have Chris Dallinger here, who is the former software engineer at Twitter, Oracle and Sun, and he will speak on performance and our impact. All right. Hi. Um, I'll figure it out. Sveiki. Labdian. That's all the Latvian I have, except very important words like Malka, you know, when you need to order some. Um, I might cough a bit. I was sick, and you know, it's Latvia in spring, so you never know. Uh, so who am I? Right? My name is Christian Thalinger. I used to work for this company, which you might know. Uh, and when I worked at this company, it actually still was the, the Bluebird Twitter company. Um, I, in particular, I'm a compiler engineer, which probably will not tell you anything, I'm assuming. So a, a compiler, if you look it up in the dictionary, it's basically a person who produces a list or books by assembling information or written material. That's not what I'm doing, obviously. Uh, it's a program that converts instructions into machine uh, code or lower level form, blah, 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 executed by a computer. But the, the point is you're trying to make something run faster and better and more efficient. That's basically what I did all my life. And that's also what I did at, uh, at Twitter, and we, we talk a bit about that later. So I call this talk Performance and Our Impact. You know, performance, you could replace it with efficiency or whatever you want, but it's basically the things we can do to have an impact. So one thing that becomes more and more important, I think, is data sector electricity usage. There was an article, it's already a couple of years ago, uh, 2019 or something, uh, it's a Google one, uh, and it's about data centers and machine learning, and in this article, they say that 2% of the world's electricity usage is just data centers which I'm assuming now, what, five years later, it's probably more than that. Um, this is the energy forecast, and as you can see, it goes out to 2030. So if we go back to, let's say, 2020, and they said 2%, you can see where we're going. So we're talking about the, the, the green down there. So we're, we're seeing exponential growth in data center electricity usage. So it will just go up and up. We'll use more data centers, more cloud storage. You know, everyone's doing this. The good thing, is there are basically three big cloud providers on this planet. One is Google. And they, for six years now, they're saying, you know, I don't know, uh, that it's 100% of the electric electricity they're using in the data centers is renewable. Uh, let's hope it's true. Um, but they also you know, have a disclaimer that not everything is renewable because the, they call it the uh, local power grids and stuff. So I, I think when they have data centers somewhere and they have local infrastructure that supports it, that's not all renewable. But it's not bad, right? Uh, Amazon, big cloud provider, they say 90% in 2022, which is now two years ago, so maybe they're a little bit better at that. I remember Amazon were actually building uh, solar power plants to support the data centers, and, and you can do that in certain countries, not, not here, obviously, but um, when, you, when you put data centers somewhere and, you, you, and then you can put, you know, data centers are huge. You put a bunch of solar panels on the roof and whatever, so you, you can support that. Microsoft um, had something very interesting, which I've never heard of, of another company doing. So they have an internal carbon fee. So if you ever, whatever you're working on, your product, your, I don't know, you pay $15, and that, that's also an older article, so that might be more now, uh, per metric ton of CO2 you are producing with whatever you are doing, right? So if you make something more performant, more efficient, you will actually get money from Microsoft for being, yeah, you know, a good employee, I guess. Um, the bad about this is this. So this is the energy distribution in, in absolute numbers. And as you can see, coal is going up. Yes, at the bottom, sure, there's wind and, you know, hydro. And hydro doesn't change a lot. Here are the percentages, and you can see Hydropower doesn't change a lot. It's just coal, coal is getting more and more. So 
we will, as we can see, yes, it's slightly going up. We will use more wind and hydro and solar, but it will take time. And, and we will probably grow more in data center and net, network electricity usage than we can make one of these renewable ones. So it's very important to do something about this. You remember this guy, the Google guy? Okay, so he did something very interesting. Uh, he used machine learning to save energy in data centers. And so basically, it's, it might sound weird, but uh, the, in 2014, you know, 10 years ago, uh, Google, they said Google center, data centers already used 50% less energy than the industry standard that, the, at that time. So we were just going with these numbers. So they were already pretty efficient compared to other ones. But what they're saying, and it's very true, is you have, if you have 10 pieces of equipment, which is not very unusual in a data center, with 10 different settings, which is not a lot, it's 10 to the 10th power of its 10 billion possibilities for a setup. You, as a human, you can never find the, the best possible way of setting them up, right? It, it, it's impossible. And the, the way to do this is you can use machine learning for that. And basically, he, that guy we just saw, 18 months later, they had this model and they had a machine learning thing for that. And they had a 40% reduction in, in energy used for cooling, which is very interesting. Right? Because you would think, oh, the machines themselves use most of the electricity, but it's usually the cooling. And I think the, how they save so much is by, by the layout, how to position them in the data center. And then a 15% reduction overall energy overhead, which is amazing, right? As a, as a human trying to set the different settings of the machines, you could never do this. So a Twitter example, yes. Um, I usually give very technical talks, right? So I'm not going to explain to you what this means. The, the important thing is there's a blue line and a red line. And lower is better, right? So this is the stuff I was working on at Twitter. Um, and then, you know, we ran these experiments with machine learning. Uh, and basically what we did was what this Google guy did with data centers, but just with software. So we were using machine learning to, to change some knobs uh, on the software and to make it run better. And as you can see here, it's like the, here's higher is actually, uh, uh, sorry, lower is better. So it's 28% of something saved, right? I'm not explaining to you what it is. This is the important one, use the CPU time. And that means computing power. Right? How much can I process in a certain amount of time? And in this particular case, the red line is 18% lower than the blue line, which means you can run the same system. In this case, it was the tweet service, which would send you tweets uh, on Twitter or X today. Uh, we could do that with 18% less machines because we optimize the software through machine learning to do this. And that also you know, equates to like, less electricity. Who knows what that is? Bitcoin mining farm. Um, <clears throat> I will not talk about Bitcoin, uh, but it's a very good example of what we can do with the right incentive. So this is, I just picked you know, a certain time frame. Um, this is the terawatt per hour usage of, uh, of, of mining rigs, basically in let's say 2018, 2019. And as you can see, there is a point where the energy usage dropped, like drastically, actually, and, and without any reason, to be honest, uh, or obvious reason. So you see it, it dropped from the, the, what, the line in the middle is the average one, which they think it's correct. So they, it dropped from 51 to like 30 terawatt hours. Um, and the reason for this is around this time, the price dropped. So when the price of Bitcoin dropped and the Bitcoin miners, they make money by mining Bitcoins and then selling them, they had to shut down their machinery because they weren't profitable anymore. So everything, literally, I think, everything is money driven and incentive driven, right? You would never optimize anything if you are not making or saving money because of it. If we could, we would just blow all the CO2 out there, you know, and use all the oil if we had endless of it. So it's all money driven. And that's when you think back of the example that I gave you from Microsoft. 
I think that's a very interesting way of, of approaching this, right? You're giving people an incentive to actually do something good. So the reason why Bitcoin is so important, uh, is so interesting, is the is the mining history, uh, the the history of the mining hardware actually. So it, in 2009, the whole thing started, and you could just use your computer you had at home at 2009, right? So a regular computer, you would mine Bitcoin. You would mine a block, you would get 50 Bitcoins. Today is like $300,000, so that, that was nice. But that didn't last very long. Only one year later, people came up with already dedicated GPUs. So GPUs are basically graphics cards, right? Um, so people were mining with that. Didn't last very long. A year later, people were doing FPGAs. I'm not sure if you know what that is, but it's kind of a piece of hardware that uh, where you can program them to do something very specifically. Uh, same year, not even a year later, same year we went to ASICs. And ASICs are basically integrated chips, CPUs, and that's how it works today. And they become more and more and more complex. Uh, the interesting thing about this is, oh, I'm sorry, um, we made this progress this quickly because we had a lot, a lot of competition from others. And it was all about making money. So if we want, we can. You just need the right incentive. So energy forecast, we've seen this slide before. I want to go back. We looked at the green stuff, the data center stuff, but I want to go to the blue part, which is the networks, wired and wireless, which is becoming more and more and more, right? 5G is coming, lots of data is being sent around. Everyone after this conference today will go home and watch YouTube and Netflix. So there's a lot of streaming and data shuffling going on. So one thing that's very important, I think, is data reduction and caching. So a content delivery network is basically a local cache, right? If every one of you would watch the same Netflix movie tonight and the Netflix service from the US would have it sent to you individually, it would be a lot of data, a lot of network and electricity usage. So what you want is a local cache, let's say in Latvia or somewhere in Europe, where there's a copy of that movie, only send it over once from the US and, and then distribute it from here. The big ones, again, Google, you see these, is, these are what the big data center and content delivery networks are. They have smaller ones as well in metropolitan areas, but these are the big ones. And they're, of course, you know, where, where the most population is. There's not a lot going on in South Africa uh, or in Africa in general and South America, as you can see. Uh, Amazon, pretty much the same, right? Lots in Europe and Asia and a little bit South America and South Africa. So I think there's still a lot we can do on that front. Microsoft basically looks the same. So, but the more, the more we can cash locally, uh, the, the more we can save them. So big data center in Riga, I guess uh, we need one. So performance tuning in general has an impact, as you can see. We can do things. Uh, we can do it either manually, we can, we can use machine learning or, or computers to do it for us, but we can. Uh, and I'm leaving you with this one. Um, whatever you do, you know, we're all caught up in, in projects and deadlines and, and things we have to do. But every now and then you should stop and actually think about what you're doing and what your impact is of what you're doing, because you can change that. All right. Thank you very much.